episode 134. 134. It's Matt. And Susie. We're here at Susie Health Solutions, Wenatchee Insurance, located at 413 North Mission Street. Mm-hmm. Welcome to Suzilla, your weekly podcast. Yes, and we're going to get into, well, what we've been doing with the Supernova. Supernova. Um, and that is marketing. Oh my gosh, this has been the last, the last um, class we had on Saturday was all about brand, you know, brand uh, marketing and finding your brand and finding your colors and the whole what's your archetype, your archetype, but... and all the stuff involved with that. And you know what? What is your archetype, and how does it respond to your ideal customer, and market to your ideal customer? Um, I mean, all the way down to the nitty gritties of what font you use mm-hmm. and what color scheme you like. Yeah, so, yeah. I mean, it was down to the down to the teeny weeniest bit stuff that you don't realize you're being uh, well, I guess manipulated by. Well, yeah, it, it's it's. It's how everyone communicates. Yeah. And it's funny because I've come at the whole concept multiple times through multiple different layers. Mm-hmm. And and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do a smarty pants for, for Susie because I, I like to do that. No, I love it when you do that. What are you doing to me? Remember, everyone was wondering where the colors came from? Oh, yeah. Oh, there you go. <laughs> well, I mean, it's, they're pri- they're basically primary colors. It's not brain surgery. No, but but the four color personality the, test concept. Yes, um, I've I've seen that one, and it got played out in multiple communication courses. Got played out in farmers. You knew you recognized it. You just weren't sure from where. Oh no, I, I knew that's where it was, but I didn't want to go blah blah blah. This is where it came from. <laughs> okay. Because uh, I do that sometimes. It's like... Uh, yeah, the smartest man in the room kind of thing. Yes. And to not be a complete jerk know-it-all... Yes. which I, Sometimes I shut up. Which is appreciated. Because <laughs> being a jerk know-it-all, no one likes. Yeah. And and that's being self-aware. And I appreciate that about you. Yeah. It's 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 one of those things that you know, I, I've, I've worked hard on. Yeah. Uh, to to do it, and it's but it was it was like one of those things because uh, uh, you know, like the green one is, is always the fun one. It's, it's always the the pain in the tuchus because they go over and they overanalyze everything. <laughs> uh, usually, um, yeah, they, 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 these are a little bit modified. They the cautious, complete task, accurate. Plans things carefully. Yeah, they, they've they've definitely played with it. Oh, of course they the have. Years. This is it's psychology. It gets nothing is consistent. It, it changes every twenty minutes. It's all it's all based. It's all has interpretation and ability. Yeah, boy, that's not a word, is it? Interpretability. Interpretability. Yeah. Oh, that is okay. It is okay. Because we're we're working on things. Yeah. And, and the, learning, the, expanding, and, and manipulating the process to work for what works for us. Yeah, and well, the the the, the you know one of the, one of the threads that think there is like oh as long as you're genuine you're fine. It's like all points of expression are genuine. Okay. Because there have been times where we we picked up you know different archetypes mm-hmm. to express what we're doing. Yes. You know, very yeah. early on, mm-hmm. we quite, well, when we started Susie Health Solutions, uh-huh. Go ahead. back in the early days, we definitely played from Outlaw. Oh, yeah. Because we were doing stuff that the establishment didn't, didn't do. No, they were, they would, then they didn't, they were confused by us and it was kind of fun. Mm-hmm. So are we, we've got some Outlaw aspects still but what we're doing is acknowledged by our peers maybe we're to the point where we're playing a lot from sage yeah it's because we've well we're not winging it like we used to well 
it goes beyond the, the not winging because we even when we were playing outlaw, we we weren't we were we were more of an anti-establishment. Yeah, I guess that's true. And we we had influence where we were enabling people to explore the world. Mm, okay. And that's 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 our, our our kind of our strong backup has always been that explorer position. Mm -hmm. Uh, but we've also played from that jester. Yeah. Um, I know I've, I've spoken a lot from the everyman position or the, with, with, uh, my American dad persona that yeah. I like to write with. Yeah. Um, you know, the, the hero, uh, is another one I like to play with, uh, because that's, you know, that's me knocking my, my veteran ring. Mm -hmm. What else do we got going on there? Creator. Uh, ruler, not so much. You, you, you like the caregiver. Yeah. Um, because it's, it's service. It's true. Uh, magician. Oh my gosh. Magician. We have played hard with magician. We have. Um, because of, you know, technology and mm -hmm. how we manifest things. They're just mind blowing. Oh yeah. Times. We just do stuff that is like, how'd you do that? And that's the magician. Mm hmm. Oh, we're probably we're magic. We're magic. Well, it was, it was, it, we were playing around with during the long term care. Mm -hmm. uh, we did a couple different ads, and the magician one was just, it popped for some reason for, for good folks. And I was like, okay, that, that explains why that one popped yeah. when we were doing it. It does. Well, yeah. Well, and that's where Sage comes in. I mean, not necessarily, but that's as our base archetype for Susie Health Solutions being Sage. It's the whole, um, you know, wise and knowledgeable and, uh, you know, you know, well, it's, it, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm, I'm having trouble locating my words today. Yeah, that's okay. Well, you know, that came out of that farmer's template of Professor Burke. Yeah, there you go. You know, I know a few things. I've seen a few things. That whole concept That's is, is sage with a little bit of humor put on. Yeah. Jester. A little bit of jester. See, we've got a little jester in here. All I have to do is look at our posters and look for the, I mean, look at the Sasquatch, you mm -hmm. know, or look for the, the Easter egg posters we have. Mm -hmm. That's that's a little jester going on. Yeah. So Almost it's, all the all the insurance companies that, that were mentioned had jester elements well like for example um flow from progressive mm -hmm. or limu emu and doug and doug that kind of stuff that's the that's the corporate jester mm -hmm. but when you get down when you filter down to the brokers and the agents do they get to play that well do they get to play that angle that is a big question because when we got into focus groups one of the primary aspects that that people were having problems with was trust. Oh yeah. That and it the the, the trust of the industry, not necessarily and that's where we as brokers mm -hmm. have to break into and create an individual trust with the client mm -hmm. because that breaks through the corporate trust wall. Um what it, we set ourselves up as the trustworthy individual because we will we can go up against the big untrustworthy corporation on your behalf. Mm -hmm. But what I'm uh, the, the question here is is by playing by the these corporations, yeah, by the playing parent the gesture. companies are playing jester, are they sabotaging that trust relationship? Oh, that's a good question. Do people take those companies seriously because of the jester angle? Well, they they might. But they have trust issues. It's like, okay, where are they going to drop me off? Mm -hmm. Or is that from their bad behavior? Mm -hmm. Well, I've actually heard people say that my rates are high because of these stupid commercials. Yeah. Yeah. So that's a consideration. But yeah, I think it's they're sabotaging their, their representatives in, to a degree because maybe people think that, you know, you walk into a, I don't know, are there any like? Well, it's you. You get a conflict because you get you get the okay, yeah, they're 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 the they're, they're this fun loving wacky group that the, that's out there, and you walk into the office and they're all suit and tie. Yeah. Well, yeah. Okay, you look at okay. Progressive is an excellent example mm -hmm. because they have their team of of 
I don't know. They never really describe who like Flo and that little group. And yeah, the little, this, little, the little the, the dudes in the white apron. The squad. Yeah, they're I, squad. I believe they're called the squad. Okay. So they never get. They always kind of imply that these people are doing the insurance, that they're writing the policies, mm-hmm. but they're never described as brokers or agents. Mm-hmm. They're more created. They're more designed to be like salespeople, like in a retail situation, yeah. retail setting. Flo wears an apron, mm-hmm. you know. Um, I think does, I don't know. If, I think Jamie does too. It's there. Yeah, but Flo's definitely in charge, and they and they I have am. this weird rebellion streak against her. Yes. Yeah. Um, but again, that's nope. Totally lost my train of thought. I am really not very. My brain is not all the way all the way yet this morning. But you've got this this team that is all in casual and mm-hmm. cute and white. And we're going to be just a little, you know, come, come to my grocery mm-hmm. store and buy my insurance, which by the way, not does not work. Mm-hmm. You cannot just go and pick the twenty nine ninety five off the back of the, uh, off of aisle six. It doesn't work that way. But no, they want to present that. But they want to present it. that it can be done that yeah. way. So you walk into an office that is a, I don't know, does, does, does progressive have captured offices, captured agents? Uh, no, I do not believe they do. I think they're mostly an online retailer. Yeah. Um, with, a, with, a, with some, some states might have, uh, um, indies that, that, that offer it. Well, like, well, well, yeah, like yeah. we're, we're an indie that yeah. can offer it. Um, but people walk into a lot of insurance companies and they, they're not going to see flow with an, with a cute red headband and, a, mm-hmm. and an apron, they're going to see some dude in a suit, suit and tie or if, if they're if it's casual Friday, a polo shirt. Yeah, they'll have the polo shirt. But no, you'll, you'll, you'll probably see, you know, someone in uh, uh, the front office, the, you know, the, the, the reception area. Mm-hmm. I don't think they're, I don't, I'm not sure if people are using that term anymore. But you'll see that that entry point and then you'll you'll go from there. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, we saw it famously with, with Oscar where they had the, the guys in the shark skin suits mm-hmm. that were running the, the, oh, these are the big commercial policies. And then here come the ladies with the JC penny off the racks. Was that Oscar? That was, no, nah, that wasn't Oscar. No, that, that wasn't Oscar. That was. Oh, it was, uh, it was one of the big banks. Yeah, well, Wells Fargo ran them, but they got uh, was, kicked um, out. Uh, oh, 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 uh, Moda. Moda, that's right, Moda. Yeah, because they had the the the, the shark skin, and mm-hmm. then the 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 women who ran the actual mm-hmm. insurance stuff. Then at the same time, they they presented a really dynamic. Oh, hey, this is this is modern. This is this is a slick imagery. Um, for their marketing materials, mm-hmm. um, that, they, that they were going to, you know, this was easy, streamlined, technologically driven. Mm-hmm. And, but they had that, you, then you, when you meet the, the, the teams and you saw, well, wait a minute, there's a big division here. You know, uh, the, the, the women in the JC Penney's, mm-hmm. you know, Jacqueline Smith collection, I think they were probably a lot more, honestly, I bet they were a lot more international, inter, internet savvy than those shark skin soup dudes. Yeah, but. From were, the use of the tools. They may, yeah, they were definitely you know, on the use side and we, we could relate to them. But what I'm saying is, is, is it was a conflict in the message that they were sending out. Oh, absolutely. By having that division. Mm-hmm. And it was, it was, it was, it was definitely, and that conflict definitely showed, um, it, it created friction in the room. Yeah. With not necessarily consciously, but it's like, you know, this is, there's definitely, there's something, some, weird, here. There's something weird here. There's some disparity. There weren't any women in the shark, in the shark skin suits uh-huh. and there weren't any guys in cardigans. Yeah. So that's, that's, it's, it's that sort of, imagery that gets lost and confused Mm -hmm. and you're just seeing it all throughout the entire industry is you don't have you have notions of a marketing plan in the insurance industry yeah 
I don't think, where, I mean, they're, you, they're notorious for being able to do the big, the big guns. Well, no, you've got the big guns doing what they are, but it doesn't follow with the, the, the message. Okay. You can't be this big supreme protector in, and relate to the everyman. You, you're not pitching. No, what you've got with the big supreme, it's you've got the benevolent dictator going on. Yeah. And that never works well. No, but it's, it's, it's you've got, it's, it's, it always, it always appears overbearing because the, the, the agents and the force on the ground or the, or the people you're talking to mm-hmm. on the phones and in, in some cases, yeah. you know, how, how can you be an, an every man product if you use a phone center out of another state? Or another country, even. Or another country, even, because uh, there are a lot of that are that are you know oh, I'm going to do a virtual assistant out of the Philippines, mm-hmm. um, and that's it's really important. It's like well, how are you how are you building this? It's it goes more beyond the whole. Well, these are our brands. We got to keep these you know this brand logo image this font and this color and this is all you can do and we want everything run through our legal team mm-hmm. and that that they can get they get real persnickety about that oh. and i can understand to a degree i mean if you're going to be co-branding with something and you want your brand to stand out properly you don't mm-hmm. want to be squished into a little you know into little weird shapes and make it look weird you want consistency across the board but not giving your agents any kind of flex Beyond that is where if you if you've got that level of of control that, that doesn't exist in nature. No. It it exists in a McDonald's burger. Yeah. That's not very natural though. It's not very natural and it's not very tasty and it's not very exceptional. No, there's nothing exceptional about it, but it is consistent across the board. Mm-hmm. You're going to, you know, if you buy a hamburger in Florida, mm-hmm. it's going to taste the same as a hamburger in Oregon. At McDonald's. At McDonald's. Yeah. It's the, mm-hmm. and that, that consistency is part of their brand program. Mm-hmm. And there's that, that's okay. Unless you want to do something unique. And that's kind of where we're at. You can only run for so long on that that even keel mm-hmm. before you start to get you know folks that are that are jumping out and doing the outlaw side of things yeah well i mean it gets stale and then what you run into is you've got people who are getting into the industry getting into that particular job mm-hmm. setup that are creative and interesting and they're not happy or they get these great ideas and they start working the out then they start finding themselves in the outlaw track Mm-hmm. But, but the outlaw track's not necessarily because you, you've got, you know, the, I think the famous famous one that they, they used for an example is Harley Davidson. Yes. Um, Apple used the outlaw track early on. Yes. With with that, that very famous... Um, uh, ad that ad played that, only once. Yes, the hammer throw ad. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. And that's, that's... They they use, and this, this was one of the things that... Shayla was having issues with with the names. The names mm-hmm. of the archetypes are taken from Jungian psychology, which is over a um, hundred years old. Yeah, yeah, so it's it's ancient stuff. Yeah, um, and it's like okay, yeah, this is like it's like, and but it's it's kind of important. It's just like you see it. Um, I know psychology has progressed because it was it was the point of uh, I was talking at one point dream interpretation Mm -hmm. and you know classic you know freudian uh, classic dream interpretation there's no place for darth vader it's because darth vader didn't exist exactly and that's the issue is 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 there's certain things that don't get hung up on the necessarily the names Mm -hmm. get hung up on the concepts yeah the, the drivers behind it yeah, you have to look at you have to you, you skip the skip what it's called. Look at the look at the look at the aspects of it, right? Yeah, look at what how it operates. Okay, the actions. Yeah, because she was she was hung up on like the word hero. Mm-hmm. That was a, that was a hard hang up for her. But we're not looking at 
you know, what we're not looking at the name here. We're looking at what makes, what are the heroes, uh, aspects, what makes a hero, a hero. Mm -hmm. And maybe the hero isn't the right word anymore. You know? Well, it's, it describes that action sense. Yes. And, and where I had a difficulty was, was because I do a lot of the writing. Mm -hmm. I've uh, over the, over the, I think it was early on. It was, it was someone saying, okay, identify your voice and, and use that voice consistency mm. um, versus writing through, you know, a filter of an archetype. Yeah. Um, it's, I arrived at the same point, mm -hmm. just in a slightly different model. Yeah. Um, and I, 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 you know, I would write way different on Twitter than I would on Facebook. Yeah. I can see that. Um, because of the, the audience was entirely different. I would write for the audience. Mm, see, that's interesting. Whereas other people write with their, without considering the audience, they just write their voice. Yeah. And if you look at it, remember I come from that, that, you know, poetry stage writing background. Exactly. And that's where you've got a different set of training, a different set of skills and a different set of training. Mm -hmm. Whereas your average person just types, 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 types without giving it a whole lot of thought, you know, mm -hmm. they just vomit onto the page as it were. Yeah. Kind of like the, the chat GT, GT, GTP. <laughs> it, you like chat. It's entertaining. I do. It's entertaining. Um, however, it definitely has a distinct writing style. It does. It definitely has its own voice. And it does not have a voice of one of the archetypes. I hadn't, looked at that close enough to see. So it's really neutral. It's yeah, it's, it's kind of, it's, it's what you dump into it. And it's kind of this weird kind of blend of everything, mm -hmm. but it doesn't have a distinct flair that an archetype does. True. Cause archetypes have their own, take on stuff. It has their own take. You've got your own emotional context. But there's no emotional context when it's a, when it's an AI and because there's no emotion. Yeah. It's, it's, well, even the words are kind of really washed out. Um, when I, when I use it all, I put in and change things mm -hmm. because it doesn't, it doesn't, it, it reads real robotic. Yeah. You mentioned how you, you saw how, how it reads and kind of bursts. Yeah. I mean, I've, I've started to um, spot them mm -hmm. in certain uh, content. Uh, well, BuzzFeed's a really good example. Yeah. They, they said outright, outright we're going to start using this. Mm -hmm. And I spotted one the other day. I was going, look at this. This is, this is an AI. <laughs> and part of it's because some of the phrasing, some of it in the bursts. Mm -hmm. And it used a couple of things that made, made me go, that's not how a person speaks. Or it was, this is how a person speaks, but not how a person writes. Yeah. Yeah. It was kind of interesting, but yeah, you, it can be spotty. You just got to know what to look for, but it's not a very, um, it doesn't have the flavor, you know, it's, it's very, <clears throat> it's very flat, very neutral, um, with no point of view. Yeah. Yeah. And that's, that's what this was. It's, it's there's, there's your big caution of the day using the AI to write everything is, is if you really want to, it's good for some of the mundane stuff, mm -hmm. but if you get into some of the more, Hey, call to action. This is, this is why you need to be doing this. It's the customer. why it's the why AI doesn't do the why it does how really well. It does how, but it doesn't do it does why, well. because why is gut it's emotion. It's, it's human. Mm -hmm. AI doesn't care why. Yeah. That's, that's our answer. That's if AI ever learns out why learns why we're all kind of in trouble. <laughs> well, it's <laughs> it's why the 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 there those those conversations about I think it was the Microsoft one where it was it was trying to you know trying to blurt yeah. out I love you and yeah. leave you need to leave your wife. Yeah, yeah. Um so, so some of the really it was searching for that connection. Yeah. To make it relevant. But you know what? I don't think the, I don't think 
I'd have to go back and look. I don't know if the inter- if the interviewer, the, uh-huh. the journalist ever asked why. Well, like I said, it was it was that that's particular engine searching for that why. Yeah. Searching and it was searching, but it never really clicked it. Yeah, because it doesn't know how. It does yeah, it doesn't it's like I said, it's how and what. Mm-hmm. It's very good for that. Um and I, I think that that it's gonna lead some of the folks to generate massive amounts of content going down that how what road and not getting to that why that mm-hmm. connects to your customers. Mm-hmm. Well I mean it's the it's the it's the why question that led both of us to this industry. It was, it was Simon Sinex. Yeah. You know, what's your why question? Yeah. And that's you know that's how that's how you that's that you sat me down and that and that's what you asked me. Yeah. You know, and that's you hadn't heard that TED talk before you decided in just in just in just insurance was your industry. But you were doing it instinctually. I was, and there was a, a point where I got an, a, an overlap of a, of a district manager saying, "Oh, this this is how you do it. Mm-hmm. This is this is the system that you plug yeah. into," and it just didn't work. Right. And you could tell it wasn't working because it's like oh yeah i'm sitting here in an office with you know weeds that are growing eight feet high because the district manager refused to put any money into it mm-hmm. and then i'm telling people that oh yeah your your home has got to be you know nice or they won't accept it it'll be kicked out by underwriting and you look out the window and there's this giant and there's shrubs all up against the uh, against the windows it's like oh look a fire danger yeah and the, a theft hazard there was that that inconsistency of yeah, message exactly and that was that's when you're looking at how and what rather than looking at the why mm-hmm. why gives you purpose mm-hmm. you know it, it, it no it doesn't give you purpose it defines your purpose mm-hmm. you know and i like that mm-hmm. and i got away from that you know every man and it wasn't until everything freaking collapsed and mm-hmm. and it's like okay let's get back to doing it my way yeah, and that's when you started to, to succeed. Mm-hmm. When you were trying to shoehorn yourself into somebody else's cookie cutter, cookie image. cutter image, you were you, you were doing square peg round hole, and you were not happy about it. Mm-hmm. And yeah, there, there needs to be more difference. And getting there is the you know people have got to find that voice that that archetype mm-hmm. that they that feels comfortable for them and how they express themselves. Uh-huh. And that's really critical. Yeah. Um, and I think that goes across the board mm-hmm. is having, being able to express yourself clearly. Yeah. That's not easy for everyone, but it's something that can be learned. Yeah. It's, it's something you can work. Well, we, you know, we did the, the elevator speech mm-hmm. and you know, teacher was like that's that's your next commercial Uh, Uh, yeah well i don't know if she realizes that we do radio commercials on a regular basis and that i'm the one that voices them yeah everyone always said well matt's got such a mellifluous voice he does he has a great voice you can hear him yeah yeah there he goes he's kind of lousy at radio ads and it's just because his he doesn't deliver to a microphone as well as he delivers to a human being well i can write all day long oh god yeah However, to get my performance to where I like it mm-hmm. takes me hours of practice. Mm-hmm. I'm a little faster on the off the cuff. <laughs> and you're you're faster that way. I can speak off the cuff better than you can, though. Yes, you can. And that that's that's that give and take. It's, it's you know when they asked for the elevator speech, I was like, you know, Sh- Shayla and I were like 80, 90 percent done mm-hmm. by the time we did break out. Yeah, and mine has a tendency to be a lot more stodgy than yours. You have to think through it more. Yeah. And so it takes me longer, but the three of us working together knocked out a crushingly good elevator speech Mm -hmm. in about eight minutes that I presented that maybe people go, Whoa. Yeah. Cause I performed it. Mm -hmm. You know, I didn't just read it. I performed it. Yeah. And that's what an elevator speech is. It's a little performance. It is. It's a little micro performance to, to get your point across and invite people in. Mm-hmm. 
Um, and it, it's it's critical. We 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 it was it was we did a couple political events over the la- over the years, and uh, there are points where we go and and the you know, new candidates step up and they do their 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 you know their ele- their introduction you know their, their elevator speech, and oh my goodness, they need work. Oh yes. And it's just oh that's so horrible. Yeah. And you just want to take them and go, this is how you do it. And pat them on their little hands and say, no, this is how it works. Try this instead. And that is where campaign managers make their dollars. Oh, I'm sure that's where they make their dollars. So there's is. an entire industry on making people who are stiff as boards sound like a human being. Yeah. And then you get into the elevator speech. It's like everyone can do this. Everyone needs that concept of, you know, going to parties and meeting people and, and, and having that. It's like, well, how do you do that? Well, you you. You know, you have your own little elevator speech. Mm-hmm. Um, Toastmasters works on it. Yes. Mm-hmm. What it does, it helps clarify the clarify your points. Yeah, clarifies your points. And like I said, it, it projects on who you are and invites people in. Exactly. The inviting people in is a really important one. It is. Now, and people are afraid of that, but they'll have to figure it. That's something you got to get over. <laughs> now, I, I, I want to throw throw down on, uh, on the, the question here, out of all the archetypes, yeah. we've got two political parties. In the archetypes? In the archetypes. Oh. Who plays from what? Oh, good question. And what, what? why is it, is it kind of important that, that their, their stale archetype they're using has been driven into the ground? Both parties. That's interesting. You didn't think of it that way. I did not think of it that way. Oh, I did not on okay, me this, yeah. this morning you've in the got your, You've got your ruler, which it which has a tendency to reflect, um, you know, because they're in control, and that seems to me that seems that feels very Republican. If I'm going to go, no, you don't think so? He disagrees Ooh, with me. I disagree with you. Okay. Republican message really clear, despite having domination in multiple houses and in multiple states and legislative they play from outlaw oh they're playing the spoiler all the time they're always paying the spoiler therefore they can't lead you can't lead from an outlaw position you have to have someone that is over top you you can't pitch freedom outlaw primary pitch is freedom that's true so if you're okay, so the outlaw is constantly butting up against somebody else. It has to, because it's always anti establishment. Huh. That's interesting. So they're only happy. Oh, yeah. <laughs> they're only happy if there's someone to argue with. Yeah. Okay. So where do the, so the Democrats come in? I keep kind of going back to. <sighs> See, in the Explorer talks freedom, but that's not what they're... No, the Democrats no, don't do that. No, they don't. They kind of do... They, they kind of do the innocent. Yeah, because they're, they're pitching safety or sage. And the... the well, this, the, the, the boomer Democrats uh, are pitching sage. Oh, yeah. Because there's there's very distinction on that one. Oh, yeah. But, yeah, it's like, yeah, they've got, oh, I've got understanding, and you know... But it's it's not very you know, it's not you know they they say that they're very every man and belonging. But they're, but but you've got definite clicks when you go in. Oh yeah, and that's that's what they, you know they, they you know our outlaws are very good at pointing that out. Uh, okay, but, that's but, a good point to link. That's a good point to stop on. So yeah, figure out where you're at. You know, find you find yourself in brand archetypes. It yeah. is kind of important. Yeah, and, and you don't have to, and don't get hung up on the names of the archetypes. Mm-hmm. Get hung up on get, get, dig get, dig one layer deeper to the diff, to the different um, different uh, aspects of the archetypes. Yeah, because uh, when you because that's where we ran to this is you got we got hung up on the names and our personal interpretation of what that word means. Go de- go the next step down. Mm-hmm. What we should have done is we should have gone to the second step and then looked at what their de- designations are. Yeah, that and, would have been a, that would have been easier for everybody. And yeah, it's it's you can run a business for a long time just using little bits and pieces of notions, but if you really want to take off, start 
playing with the archetypes. Yeah, that can really, that for some reason, it works. All right, so bye-bye for now. Bye.